Good afternoon, everybody. DJ Styles. Okay, back to the drawing board. Ah, how can I say this? Um, so what I did was I made a hard casting. Now I've made some changes to this uh, this mask or this uh, sculpture uh, from what you've seen before to now. And it was based on the fact that I made a, a uh, mold and then I poured my first latex mask in it. And uh, what I found, this is, the, this is the, the latex mask that I pulled from it. Now it's not completely cured yet. That's why it looks very whitish, yellowish white. All right. This cheek is too protruding here. Um, boy, it's starting to make me wish that they had, they made this in a lighter color because you can really see uh, your shadows and stuff under the right lighting. With this, you can't really see it's casting a, I don't know. Maybe I just need to move. Yeah, I do. I need to slide this mask down here further so I can get more light on this cheek. But I did round this off. I brought this in some more. Uh, so you can see that it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's more in. I've done some sculpting on this a little bit more. I brought it down a little more. I, uh, yeah, to, I smoothed this out. Um, and the eye holes, the eye sockets. Well, my first mask I have to say, we're, you know, the, the mask were, it was dead on with the eyes. And what I say is the eye sockets were dead on uh, the way I liked them, the way I, the way I was trying to create that round creepiness. Right here has to go in just a little bit and then squared off right down inside of that. That, that subtle change and the depth of this sinking down. I had to sink this down just a little bit more on the clay. So I have the eye holes exactly. See how I squared this off in here? It's more straight up and then it rounds out. Um, and like that, it actually starts to cut in right from the, the, the furthest in peak. It starts to cut in. It doesn't go straight up and then round it out. Believe it or not, that little tiny bit that's wrong with the eye socket gives the expression a different look it really does it gives it a different look and i and i don't i want the original expression i am uh, i even dipped this down over here i dipped it down further i pulled this eye socket down a little bit um and uh, it looks a lot better where this one here wasn't quite wasn't quite deep enough. It was a little, you know, I made it a little higher here, and and dipped lower here and brought it in. Now we're not talking very much. We're talking a sixteenth of an inch, you know, but it changes the look of the mask. Now the most important thing that I learned was if you look at the scowl, this is the scowl, this part right here. This under, you know, even under the the latex really shows the scale up a lot more. And, and I, I don't like the fact that this is really protruding too much up in here on both sides. So what I did was I shaved this down just to, to the point where it's still there, but very, very, and then tapered it back in to this point. This is the high point right in here, and this stays high, as you can see. See what I did? It's there. You can see the you can see the drop off just a little bit right in here. That's the way it's supposed to be. All right, just like that. Only this isn't as this is protruding too much. You can see it. This blends right into the face more, and that's what you want. You can see that high, just a subtle little bump right in here. Same on the other side. Barely see it. You know. Um, Here's something I thought about. <laughs> the original mask, it was a William Shatner life cast. 
this wasn't a a sculpted mask. This wasn't something that somebody sat down and sculpted. This mask was made from a life cast taken directly from William Shatner. Now, the reason why it got all demented and distorted is because it probably went through 15 molds, you know, or 100 molds. They made thousands of masks. So the change in the way the mask looked by the time they used one in 1975, or yeah, I want to say it's 1977, because I think the life casting was done in 1975 for the Don Post mask. And uh, it was 1978 when they, when they made the movie, you know, so it was late 77, early 78 when they shot this movie. And uh, by then, this life casted mask was produced thousands of times. So the original sculpture gets lost unless you do something like this, which I don't think they did that back in those days. They just kept making uh, copies of the uh, mask with latex, you know, and latex doesn't hold its perfect shape over time. So what I'm saying here, what I'm, what I'm getting at is basically, um, if you think this mask is very easy to do, it is a very difficult mask to do to give it, to get the look that you're actually satisfied with. Uh, and the reason why this mask is so difficult because one, you're taking, you're, you're sculpting from pictures, all right, and they're in two-dimensional, and you're trying to take two-dimensional pictures and turn them into three-dimensional objects. And with that being said, we are sculpting somebody's real face. We're not sculpting, uh, we're not sculpting, a, and I, I don't, don't take this, don't take this wrong, but when you're sculpting monsters and stuff, you're, you're, you can kind of make the face your own. You don't have to be perfect. But when you're sculpting somebody's existing face or existing mask and and uh, it's from a life cast, you're actually sculpting, you know, a human face. And they're not easy to do. They're not easy at all. No, 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 no. They're not easy at all. And uh, I didn't like the way this turned out. So what I'm going to do is sculpt this back to even here. You know, you see this, there's a little bump here that I didn't see because I didn't push this sculpture into the light far enough to get underneath of that chin. So now I'm, you know, I, I am, it's there now. See how nice and smooth that is? I, I did fix that. But I still want to put this side of the mask right here in more light like this one is over here. I need the light to really see how that's going. This side is, is you know, I can see exactly what I was, you know, was doing. So it really, you know, it was pretty good. Um, yeah, this is, this is a, it's a really cool and very challenging. I, I did put the, uh, the uh, needle hole in the mask. That's in the right position. Um, you know, so that'll be there. I won't have to worry about it. I'm going to recap. I'm going to re, I'm going to make another mold from this before I go on to uh, carving the 2018 because I just didn't like the way that turned out. And I'm not going to make my master from that. This cheek, you see how this cheek is really sticking out right here? And the, and the, uh, it's, there's too much here, right in here. It's, it just needs to be pulled all back here on, you know, on that casting. And I can't do anything about that mold. There's nothing, nothing you can do without destroying that mold. Uh, to try and shape that on an inverted mold is <laughs> next to impossible. I, you know, if you can sculpt that, then you really are doing something. Now you're talking about sculpting invertedly, and that's that's brutal. I don't even want to try to think about doing that. It's hard enough trying to do it in, in in this format i can't imagine an inversion an inverted uh uh sculpture and actually sand out the in you know sand it out uh, it, it would be impossible <laughs> so you're not you wouldn't be sanding this in an inverted uh sculpture you would be sanding this 
and sanding this down and making that shape right. And that, oh my God, I can't imagine what that would be like. Holy mackerel. But I'm not happy with the way this turned out. The scowl looks too protruding. The, uh, the cheek is too protruding. This side turned out pretty good. I'm not too, not too, oh, I did fix the under chin. See, this, this was carved out. You can see this line. You can see this is too defined, this line here. And you can see, it looks carved. So I really did smooth that out. Um, let me see if I can. Hopefully that. Yeah, I smoothed that out. I got a lot of those lines out of there. Still got a little bit. I got to get out in here, right there, and here. Um, well, this is this is a difficult task. It's not it's not an easy task. The er, the ears are perfect. I love the way the ears turned out uh, this time around. The ears look really good, and and that's another reason why I don't want to do this casting. These ears, and I I know what did this. I, I I had to do a slush casting with this because I didn't have enough latex. I only have a little bit of latex left uh, from the summer, and uh, a slush casting is when you're when you're filling the mold up with maybe three inches of, this, uh, of three inches deep of, uh, of latex and then kind of sloshing it around the walls to give it that and uh, to, to get it on all the areas. Plus the seam line, way too protruding. I could sand that off, but man, it's going to be a lot of extra work doing that. Um, the clay barrier that I put up there, I just, I just need to do a better job doing that. You know, this is my only second, this is my second uh, mask I've ever done, you know, as far as sculpting. Sculpting uh, clay, I always worked with wood. What is that dent? I see a dent here. Okay, I'll have to fix that. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is my second attempt at doing a sculpture and man, did I pick the hardest one you can possibly do. And that's the William Shatner. And the reason why is because it, it is not actually a, uh, this is actually a human face. The original, when they made the, uh, Don Post made his masks, uh, the, the, um, the Captain Kirk mask, that was taken from a life casting. It wasn't sculpted. It wasn't a sculpted piece. Uh, it was a life casting of William Shatner when he was young. And uh, they uh, made a Captain Kirk mask from that life, uh, that life casting. And now I'm trying to replicate what that life cast was. <laughs> so you're literally trying to duplicate a human face. Only I'm trying to duplicate the face after many thousands of uh, pours you know, of, uh, masks were made and then you're trying to replicate the, uh, the mask as it deformed, you know, to give it that Michael Myers look, uh, you know, the, the sunken cheek, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the scowl, just the, the face, oh, especially the lips, the lips and the chin, they really kind of, um, hold on, I'm turning this thing. They really kind of got deformed as time went on. Uh, you know, it, it got bold. It was bulged in this area, bulged in this area, kind of uptight in this area. Um, a little higher on this lip than it is on that lip. And it, it, it just had this little twisted look and it protruded. In other words, this area here came out. It was like a little further out. It kind of kind of bumped out some, you know, to, to give it that weird look. Now, I think part of that was in the original 1978 film, Nick Castle had a very long face. So when his chin went in this mask, uh, he pulled, it stretched the mask down. So it actually pulled everything away. And, and, and that's what caused the deforming, um, of the mask. But, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to replicate, and it's not an easy task. So, bear with me, folks. I'm going to get this right. I'm going. To, I want this mask to be spot on. I want it to be as close as I can possibly make it. 
and hopefully the next casting that I do, uh, this next casting, the next stone mold that I make will produce something a little better than this. And uh, definitely something better than this. I have to have this right. So, yes. But this, this I can tell already just by this side of the face. I can, I'm looking down at this way. It looks, even on camera, it looks a lot smoother. It looks the way it should. Um, where that one didn't. I can see the little imperfections down here. It's like this bump that shouldn't be there. It's like, I don't know, it just needed to be blended in more in this area. This came too much to a point. That's blended in. That's all smooth and rounded more. And brought down more of a taper in here. I took out that lumpy area. You know, just, it's the subtleties, man, the slightest, slightest little bit that you change changes the look of the mask. It really does, or the, the sculpture. And I wish this clay was in a lighter form because I'm starting to realize when something's lighter, the shadows, you can see better. You can see the shadows better. Uh, when And color, meaning if this wasn't so dark brown and this was a lighter shade of brown, you'd be able to see the shadows a lot better. And that's the problem. You don't see any, like I don't, like the way the angle of the light is right now, it's casting, it's not giving me any shadow at all. It's, it's all shadow here, I'm sorry. Um, I need less shadow in this area so I can see this bottom part and see how this comes in. This almost looks a little too, um, looks like it's going uphill a little bit. I might be wrong. I don't know. That looks about right. It might be a little too square. We'll see. You know, I think this this has to be downhill just a little bit more. So I might have to add a little bit of clay in this area and bring it into this and then kind of taper it downward. We'll see. Um, this is just a constant work in progress. I got the nose. I repaired this whole thing. And once I repaired it and I started putting a little check mark in here, you know, to start going with this here, I put this piece, I put that on this cheek. And I also did this hole on the side of his cheek. And once I, I said, wait a minute, just stop. Take a, take a pause. Wait until this is cured enough to where you can pull it out of the, 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 the mold. And then look at this before you, you start, you know, on to the next project. So that's what I did, and I'm very, I'm very happy that I did because I realize I have to re, I have to do a little more work to this to get it perfect, and then I'm going to make my final cast, uh, make my final mold to produce this mask, and then I'm going to move on to this right here. So I'm going to waste a little plaster. Plaster is not that expensive. The shipping kills you, but the plaster isn't that expensive. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I might have to bring this eyebrow down just a little bit. It's a little too high. I had to constantly, as I was working this and shaving this and shaping this, the eyebrows, I kept cutting down further and further, uh, with, uh, naphtha. It almost got to the point where it was almost flush with the face. And now I've got a little too much on there. So I got to constantly take the eyebrows down. And get it to where I want it. You know, it's it's a it's a constant. You're constantly taking away and adding on, taking away, adding on. It's a, it's never ending until you get it right. You know, you're not going to be happy until you until you're right. Uh, the other thing I had to do was this eye, this eyelid right here. I want to say the eye. I, I guess it's eyelid was sticking out just a little too far. And what I did with this one is I brought it in. I tapered it in more. You know, so it's not it's not protruding like the other one was. There's this just the slightest subtleties. It just wow man, it just really affects the way the mask look. It's it looks. Um I cannot I, I will not put something out again uh that I'm not happy with, you know, period. These little imperfections that came up in this mask, I'm sure some people would say, oh, I don't care. It looks great the way it is, blah, 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 blah. Not me. I'm sorry. No, I want it perfect. As perfect as I can possibly make it. Now, 
with this additional fix uh, and fixing the ears and getting it back to where it was. I put probably another 10 hours of work into this thing. So we're talking 100 and I had 130 hours into the original sculpture. I got 140 hours into it now. So 140 hours and I'm still not done. And, uh, but you know, I don't feel too bad because I've heard people say that they've spent months, months working on the sculpture. You know, now I'm, you know, you're, you're, uh, and I'm not talking about, uh, the walk away time. I'm talking about actual working time. You know, there's some people out there that work on this mask for months. You know, they walk away for a couple of days and they come back to it, but they, they keep track of their hours. Like I did. I keep track of the hours that I put into the mask. I don't keep track of the days or the, the time that I'm not doing the sculpture. I keep track of the hours that I'm actually sculpting and shaping and whatever else I'm doing. But when I'm working on this, that time is being calculated. No other time is. So I have right now 140 hours wrapped up into this mask. And uh, roughly, probably 139 and 45 minutes or something like that. I don't know exactly, but it's close. So I'm going to round it off to 140 hours of work to get to where this is right now. And uh, that's my uh, story, folks. So if anybody out there wants to attempt doing a Michael Myers, my advice after only doing two uh, masks is to work on a little bit easier projects first. Do, do some, especially if you're a beginner, you know, I mean, you could be a great artist and uh, you could probably put a, produce something even better looking than this. I've seen stuff out there that I like better than this myself uh, still. Um, but, this is my version. This is what I think is uh, going to, you know, produce a, you know, it's a nice mask. You know, I've had somebody say that, that, that it looks like the, uh, the screenshot of the Michael Myers uh, Halloween 4. Yeah, the Halloween 4 screenshot. If you look at the, uh, not screenshot, the poster uh, to the movie. Look at hollow look up Halloween four and then look at that mask and then look at the sculpture. And apparently it looks pretty close to that that uh mask that's on that. And I agree it does. It looks a lot like that one, which I've always liked that. I've always liked that poster shot. That was awesome. You know. Should anybody they would you would kill to get that mask. Um a lot of people tried, you know. I tried to duplicate that mask and that mask was pretty hard or that that uh sketch or drawing or whatever was pretty hard to reproduce too so i see some imperfections even now as i'm looking at the video um at the camera i can hear the eyes i see a little bit of a bulge here i gotta round that out better smooth it out in here and make that look nice sir look nice sir we gotta do this right but I think the scowl is dead on now. I don't have to worry about the scowl being something that somebody else might point out later on down the line. I think I got it right now. I got it I got it where it needs to be. The scowl meaning this. This little V thing that's on the forehead. That's the scowl. And uh, the eyebrows have to be brought, brought down just a little bit. But that's nothing. That's simple. The eye sockets, the eye holes, I got perfect. I, I have them the way I really like them. And, uh, you know, it's funny. When I did my very first Michael Myers mask, uh, where I started was the eyes. It's exactly where I started. I started right at the eyes. And then, and then from there, sculpted the rest of the mask. Um, I don't know if everybody does it that way, but that's the way I'm comfortable uh, and I spent a lot of time getting the eye cuts right in that first sculpture. This one here, I kind of did the eyes and went, okay, that, that looks good. And then just kind of moved on. And then huh, once I looked again, I went, wait, whoa, wait a minute. I made a mistake here in the corners, right in these areas, right up in here and right up in here. And just changing the, the way it sits into the corner of the eye 
right up to where the bridge of the nose is. Depending on how that sits and the shape, how it droops down, changes the whole look of the mask. It really does. It changes the whole uh, expression of the face. So I'm going to say this. Make sure that you have the eyes perfect. The eyes are the windows to the soul. So the eyes have it. All right. Peace, everybody. Have a great day.